Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. And today we're looking at another SSD, another one based on the Fizon E18 controller. And just when we thought we were getting a little bit bored of the E18 controller, not because it's bad, it's actually quite exquisite, uh, but the performance profiles of those drives have been so similar and the drives have looked like they've kind of rolled off the same production lines, which they may. That doesn't detract from the drive's capabilities, it's very, very good. And now we're looking at the Kingston KC3000, which also uses the, the E18, but actually looks a little bit different, which we'll get into in a minute. Yeah, it's it's a surprising drive. I mean, it, all these drives at face value outside of the uh, heat sinks that the vendors might uh, include on them have, I also say have subtle differences. Up until now, they have had no subtle differences. No, they had visual heat sink differences, differences only, right? Yeah. This is the first one that looks a little bit different. Well, so the difference really comes down to Kingston's ability to manufacture or use contract manufacturers that they've worked with for the ages. Kingston makes DRAM, USB drives, SSDs, obviously. So they've been around, they've been in this business for a very long time, and they'll use their own engineering capabilities and a little bit of their own uh, QA, quality control, and uh, like I said, contract manufacturers were appropriate. But what happens then is that Kingston's engineering effort that goes into the drive is maybe a little bit higher than, than others that are just buying the reference design and then sending it off to, to production. Uh, this is a drive that Kingston actually showed off at CES at the beginning, I almost said last year, it feels like a year ago, yeah. back in January, and had a really amazing performance profile, but I think that's just because we didn't know what it was at the time. We didn't know it was a Gen 4 uh, high-end Fizon controller. No. Yeah. But now we know. And now we've done the performance testing, and uh, we'll go through that in a minute. Uh, before that, let's take a look at the drive itself, though, and see where some of those visual differences are. All right, so as we take a look at a, uh, a closer shot of the drive to show all the componentry here, it is evident when you compare this Kingston KC3000 to the other E18 drives that it's just a little bit different. Where the reference board, Corsair, and uh, Seagate all look like they rolled off the same lines, this one's a little different. Yeah, so we have a couple of different uh, components uh, soldered on, and then obviously Kingston uh, likes to use their own uh, NAND pack uh, labeling. So the uh, the four NAND packs in SI are labeled or silk screened with the uh, Kingston brand name, as well as their uh, DRAM pack, and then you get to your uh, tried and true Fizon E18 controller. Then one area that was kind of interesting is uh, on the opposite side of this uh, board. They're one of the only ones that uh, don't use all the M.2 uh, traces. So there are some interesting elements to this drive that make it stand out a little bit, although you really have to break out a magnifying glass to find differences between these uh, SSDs. Well, and the differences do make, uh, in aggregate, the drive a little bit different than the other E18 drives. Let's take a look at the performance and see how this thing shakes out. Actually, before performance, we've got this weird endurance dynamic going on with the E18 drives. Kind of lay this out. So with drives using the same DRAM, same NAND, and same controller, and probably the same firmware or subtle difference of it, uh, you would expect them to all have the exact same endurance. Well, yeah, we noticed that in the Corsair review, that and the Fire Cuda are pretty much identical builds, but the endurance was out of whack, which is yeah. shocking. Now, Kingston's build's a little bit different with the 3000, so the endurance number could be different. I mean, we could see some changes there. Yeah, and this is where we're, we still haven't gotten a clear answer of why the difference is, because everyone should be using roughly the same spec to uh, test their endurance. Uh, it might just be that um, maybe one hones in a little bit more and it's more for warranty purposes than anything else. But we have on the low end the Corsair MP600 Pro XT with 1.4 pet uh, petabytes written, the Kingston coming in second at uh, 1.6, and the Seagate at uh, 2.55. Yeah, I, I don't know what Kingston's, or I'm sorry, what Seagate's doing, and it doesn't really matter. I mean, if they're going to stand behind it and warranty it, all things being equal, including price, then the Fire Cuda is still the way to go. And like you said, we asked about the MP600 a couple, two, almost two months ago, and, and haven't gotten an answer yet as to why their number is so low and identical to the E16 version, but we'll leave that for that prior video. Yeah. So what are we looking at 
performance wise because we would expect the king sin to be a little bit different since they're using a little bit different hardware config so performance uh, up until around uh, 450,000 IOPS or so its profile is pretty similar to the other um, uh, E18 uh, SSDs with the exception of the uh, the other devices kind of top out a little bit under 600,000 IOPS this guy came out I think it was a 454k IOPS okay which it's maybe it's a little bit more reserved than the other models. Uh, random right again, we see another difference. The other models topped out a little bit in excess of four hundred fifty thousand or five hundred fifty thousand IOPS, and the Kingston came out around one hundred thousand IOPS less. Yeah, still ahead of the the uh, Samsung, one of the our favorites, the nine eighty Pro. Yeah, on sequential read, the Kingston came out at the uh, top in around uh, six point six gigabytes per second. Well, this gets back to when you work with the firmware and the component tree just you can wiggle these things just a little bit and arc the architect the drive for whatever performance and endurance profile you want and yeah, it shows sure. up in the benchmarks yeah throughout history we've seen certain vendors uh try to tune for specific benchmarks i mean you could say you tune for all benchmarks you just create a perfect drive but there are certain areas where uh, you can improve read speeds or write speeds at the negative side of kind of detracting from the other uh, workloads. But in this case, it seems like they've tuned more for read performance than write performance. Okay. Uh, and then on sequential write, again, it, it kind of holds back a bit versus the uh, uh, Seagate and Corsair E18 models. So it came in around 1.6, 1.7 gigabytes per second where the other guys uh, reached or just came short of two gig, uh, gigabytes per second. So it's interesting to see that uh, this isn't a perfectly overlaid line from the other drives where we saw that uh, early on with those Corsair and Seagate drives back to back. Okay, so if you want the full charts, we've got them on the uh, website. We'll link to that in the video description where we've got the VDI workload, SQL Server, and, and some other goodies. So where do we come out at this on this thing at the end of the day? Performance, it's better in a lot of areas or some areas. It's a little bit worse in others. It still performs really quite lovely and continues the trend of the E18s kind of kicking ass. Yeah, I think a lot of it's going to come down to which brand you prefer, which heat sink do you like the most. Um, and uh, Which one are you going to rip off to put in your gaming board because you can't fit the heat sink in there? Yes, there's that. Okay. Um, and it's going to come down to uh, more than likely brand preference and price. Right. And which the tough part with this is if every price is equal, your next lineup is okay. Where does endurance sit out? And you're probably going to have a lot of vendor, uh, a lot of people want to go towards uh, Seagate. But right now it's like they all perform incredibly well, and it's going to come down to which brand you like going with. Yeah, and that's kind of the deal when you go with a, uh, a controller from a, uh, a provider like Fizon versus a vertically integrated solution that you might see from Samsung, for instance. Samsung's the only one that's going to put out the drive with that controller and NAND build, so they've got that little ecosystem. Uh, in this case, if you want to go Fizon E18, to Kevin's point, a lot of it's going to be price or brand loyalty or maybe on the outside some software tools if you if you find value there but i think ultimately it's going to come down to price and whoever's got the best price performance ratio is going to win in this category yeah definitely but overall a kc3000 is a good drive we recommend it you should use it feel good about it and uh, a good effort from from kingston and it's nice to see their little bit of twist and personality on uh, on this drive that's been kind of similar from from all the other providers to date so that's it for now thanks for checking in bye bye